way so first bit of news here for i'll touch upon um touching upon the whole COVID 19 thing is um this interesting case of usc 249 right so uh monsieur dana white appeared on i think it might have been espn and he essentially kind of uh gave his reasoning or his rationale as to why he thinks this um to why he thinks 249 will go on and why you know they, they're doing everything they can to make it work and i've made my feelings known you know i think it's a ridiculously stupid idea i think if they unnecessarily um put in the fighters lives in depth you no know, putting the fighters health in jeopardy it's only life because you know for the most part it's only affecting a certain uh population a certain group of, the, of a certain subsect of the population right fair enough but you're putting the health uh you're putting people's health at risk who are associated with ufc you know the backroom staff the people in the teams the some of maybe some of the media people everyone attached to it is essentially um is going to be uh, a little bit more cautious and wary and they're just in a position where they have unnecessary stress right you don't need to have this event now i think most sporting organizations or leagues whether they are professional or not have postponed there or have put a pause on their current season and they're kind of reviewing it as they go and i think i read a report i listened to a podcast someone mentioned it about football or soccer as you might call it in america where instead of cancelling the entire season they're waiting more developments from the government because they if they cancel it then they'd be legally obliged to pay back money for tv rights and it all gets into a completely messy sort of legal battle so legally in terms of kind of uh, covering their asses, they have to ensure that they've run through every, they've, they've had to make sure that they've kind of exhausted every option, apart from just banning it, apart from just cancelling it straight away. They have to go through a list of into all the options, and then if there's no, if the last resort comes to cancelling it, they'll. You don't be surprised if you see all the leagues: Italy, Spain, England, um, Holland, Germany. Don't be surprised of France. Don't be surprised if you see the entire like, Portugal, all those leagues at the same time decide to postpone their season until next year or avoid it. You'll see it happen back to back to back to back. It'll be a thing that happened, a concerted effort. But obviously, the UFC is run a little bit more cowboyish, right? Dana White, the president, is essentially the leader. He calls the shots, he arranges the fights, he pays the fighters, he probably chips in with terms of marketing and what they do in terms of uh promotion and who gets the big storylines and who gets the features he's very integral to the way the ufc kind of functions as the business or as an operation or as a sporting government sporting body whatever you may call it and he's been very adamant from the beginning of this coronavirus epidemic or pandemic sorry that he would he's not in a position to stop or cancel any of the fights he's postponing them he's very clear to stress this was postponing, postponing. And he's going to make sure that every fight went on in his rationale because he went to make sure he's feeding his fighters, giving them money, putting money in their pocket and making sure, you know, the UFC is the first. And I think his main objective is to make sure he's the UFC is the first sports organization to put an event on during the, you know, the pandemics in full swing. I think they did a one before in Brazil, but that was when it was still people weren't really aware of what the situation was. It was behind closed doors. Um, no one really watched it. I don't think for the most part, you don't really hear much talk about it. But you know, it was a bit eerie to watch. You know, as a fan of the UFC, but he's been very adamant that he wants to be the first book organization to be you know back up and running, which is probably just his ego, and it also it, it could be his ego, and it could just be the fact that he wants to show off to the other, um, what are they called the main people at national football teams, right, who are really powerful, right? So that will kind of get him in good stead with them. They'll see how he runs his business and that he doesn't really care and that he kind of goes hard for his fighters and all this sort of shit. It, it makes him in a good light. If it goes through and everything goes fine, it makes Dana look amazing because he's able to put the event on, get a spectacle on, put distract people from what's going on around the world and kind of, you know, um, reinvigorate everything. And he kind of laid bare the entire plan, mostly due prompted because he got trolled by a fake Ariel Hawani account. But he's basically given a bit more information on it. And again, I'm still not a fan of it. I still think it's unnecessary. I still think it doesn't make any sense. But, you know, by now it's too late to really be complaining about it because it's going to go forward. But it's just interesting to see the lack of dissenters out there really speaking about it out loud, I guess, because everyone's used to Dana White's antics. But it's just not something that you would want to see right from any acting president that's kind of leading an organization but this is the article here from mma fighting the headline says the following dana white's covid 19 plan two whites two months of weekly fights ufc 249 location duh, duh, duh. so the following um as much of the united states and the world uh shelters in place 
uh, to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The UFC scheduled regime, uh, resume starting with UFC 249. That's according to UFC President Dana White, who outlined a bold plan that includes da, 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 weekly fights and a private island and a long-time commentator, Joe Rogan. Which is interesting because you don't hear that much from Joe when it comes to Dana White. He keeps his uh, his opinions to himself. You know, Dana White's had a very um, checkered history with, you know, none other than Brendan Shaw, one of his best friends. Um, he pays the fight. It's notoriously really shitty. Uh, the Reebok deal was a bad deal in, you know, in retrospect and and when it got signed in, uh, to be completely honest. And generally, he tries to stay away from kind of commenting on his friend's personal life. So you don't really hear much of him saying anything about him, but it must be weird position to be with your Joe Rogan where you have a friend that by large most of the fighters don't have a good thing to say about especially if they're on his bad side but you know that's neither here or there um in the Monday interview TMZ which followed the announcement of the UFC 249 new headliner um and the co and the 12 fight card which is a really good card to be fair the April 18th pay-per-view event White kept the location of the event under wraps as he has since uh question uh uh, as he has since questions of his severe viability swallowed on the media but he said the venue is set and he's setting up shop here for two months which is similar to the plan that he had for football the plan that was being floated around at the time which has kind of been uh dismissed and kind of put to the side was that they were going to have this kind of uh festival of football sort of thing right where they essentially each major sports league so england spain uh italy germany maybe Portugal, Holland included, right? All the major European leagues would essentially host all the matches in one location. Primarily, it would be like the national team's uh, athletic center. I forgot what our one's called. We got one here in the, in, in the UK for the England national team. It would all get hosted there, state-of-the-art the facilities, it's great football pitch, blah, 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 all behind closed doors, and all the teams would be situated somewhere around that area, I guess hotels, and there'd be you know um, coaches that would take them to and from there. So similar to like what they do at the Olympics, right? Where everyone stays in the Olympic Village. There's no going out of the Olympic Village. You, tr- you, you, you train, you compete, you go and sleep, rinse and repeat until the, the matches are over. But that kind of got poo-pooed, obviously, because logistically, you know, maybe you could do it with the UFC. If you've got a card of, if you've got 12 cards, two pe- two people per card, you know, plus the team members. Let's say on each card you have maybe 10 people that are going to be transported there. It's not that bad, but having 22 players per match, plus the medical team, plus all the other extras, this wouldn't work out the same way as the UFC. So maybe that's the point of it, but... It was an idea that wasn't really flowed that well. And again, I just think looking back at it, that maybe if you analyze it, the reason why the, the Premier League didn't go through with the idea wasn't because they were trying to protect the health of the players or the or the teams. I mean, the players or the viewing public. Because I'm sure it, once they put that thing on, some supporters are going to go down. They'd just be fucking nutty, you know, and turn up and cheer their team on, as they probably should because they're fans. They want to abide by the stay away kind of rule or whatever. Of course, I'm sure they'll have a police cordon sealing it off from a particular distance but there'll definitely be people there but um i do think that the reason why the premier league probably didn't put it on was because they were more worried about their liability right they're worried about being sued if anybody contracts it or gets the disease then suddenly now you know you're in a whole different situation you're having to fend off a legal case from people that came and watched your event on the basis that you said it was fine to attend you know between lines because you put it on the first place so maybe that's why they did it it wasn't an altruistic thing it was just a pure greed thing they don't want to waste unnecessary money especially during a time when they're not receiving any gate receipts they're not selling as much merch that wouldn't be better to go about things so maybe because Dana White is running the UFC ship by himself he can steer them in any direction that he wants to because it's his company um for lack of a better term right of course there's other investors in it but he's the one kind of calling the shots um so it says here um, White said the UFC's temporary home will host U- US based fighters. Da, 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 da. So here it says from the beginning. So let's, because there's too many of these fluffy pieces. Let's see the actual quote from him. It says the following I'm also a day or two away from securing a private island, White said. I have a private island that I've secured. We're getting the infrastructure put in now. So I'm going to start doing the international fights too with international fighters because I want to be able to get international fighters, all of them, into the USA. So I have a private island and I'm going to start flying them all into the private island and doing a fights from there we have all our planes and everything so that's a obviously an ambitious goal i think i read somewhere that this fight 249 is going to happen somewhere in la or california it's going to there's some sort of indian reservation that they're going to um use 
um, that's obviously going to help them. And then I'm assuming the next cards, 250 onwards, would then be on the island people will go to. Which, again, is a wacky idea. It reminds everybody of more combat. But, again, like, if this go, if, it, if he's able to pull it through, you know, I guess it makes him look good, does it? I'm not too sure. Um, will the other sports organisations give a shit? Will they be like, oh, my God, I wish we could do the event? Probably not, because they are more aware. They're more cognitive of the damage it would do to your reputation, to the brand long term. You don't want that kind of stain on you. And I guess maybe if you're Dana, you might be... Because that's the thing, which is confusing. Because on one hand, Dana's like, he wants to legitimize the sport, right? And have it on the se- have it thought of on the same level as the NFL, NHL, NBA baseball whatever it may be called in the u.s but that's never going to happen because most of the people they probably view mma or ufc as simply just barbaric sport and that's that's what most of the boxing fans are like that, especially the ones in the states i think european fans have the ability to kind of you know watch both things but i think in the u.s there's very very much just split between two different camps right martial arts and or combat or yeah mixed mixed martial arts and uh boxing the traditional way um in the UK, we kind of tend to be fans of both easily or, you know, maybe not a fan of either. Um, but I don't think it's going to necessarily have the effect he thinks it's going to have on the commissions. I don't think anyone's going to be that impressed that he's able to do what he wants with his um, organisation. He does run it at the end of the day, right? He's the one that cuts the checks. Um, so that's not necessarily that impressive. And again, I just think if just imagine the press, if just one person ends up falling ill, that's just not worth the hassle really is it um, especially if you have because i think some of the reservation was that he didn't want weirdos calling up and maybe you know get him getting swatted and having you know people calling fake bomb threats people protesting but people have very strong reactions or strong beliefs attached to this whole uh covid19 thing um and it's not like some it's not like some willy-nilly thing that happened right it's a unprecedented incident that we don't really know how to deal with and everyone else took precautionary measures just to cover their asses of course and also to make sure they don't get themselves into any unnecessary trouble right um which is the same thing but you know they didn't want to open themselves up to any potential lawsuits no one wants that but again maybe he's got himself covered maybe he has he's lawyered up to a t we don't know and it continues here another quote from him he says um khabib was caught in the middle of this thing as the world continued to change day by day and i was trying to book venues he says it's not khabib's fault it's not anybody's fault this is something you could never prepare for plan for or even dream of that is possible well it is someone's fault isn't it? it's definitely yours you kept them you strung them along all this time you made khabib blue cut weight going to training camp only for them for you to continue putting a fight on having everyone in limbo booking people in lastminute.com securing an island it's just an unnecessary thing like he could have easily just postponed this until the island was set in stone and it was sorted and then held the khabib and tony ferguson fight there and that could have easily happened too but he's so hell-bent on making sure they catch up on all the fights they didn't want to do that which is you know a bizarre way to do things i think there might be actual um thing here that she speaks about a little bit more but i think that might be it what do you say <laughs> And then the last bit here, quote, says, everybody is getting, going to be pre-tested, tested, and tested. We're going to make sure that 100% healthy athletes, healthy athletic commission people, healthy judges, and my production people, that everybody there is healthy. We're going to make sure that everybody is safe before driving and for during after the fights. Interesting, isn't it? But it does make sense. It does echo a lot of what Trump is saying because him and Trump are friends, isn't it, right? So Trump is really on this whole, like, wanting to reopen the U.S. back for business, right? Get people back to work, um, you know, celebrate Easter. It's a strange reaction to have to some to have to have um when it's something when it's i don't know it's a strange reaction they're treating it like a like a like a this what you call it like a comp not competition but as a way to kind of demonstrate their masculinity right as like oh we're real men real men you know can fight against anything we're gonna fight this disease it's like you're not fighting anything though by saying these words or by putting on events like it doesn't necessarily make you a wuss or a pussy because you don't want to go because you're afraid you might catch something. You're afraid you might, you know, put other people's lives in danger. You're not any less of a man because you decide to stay in or you heed the advice of the medical department. Now, again, if this is just like him being entrepreneurial and pushing the envelope and not and having a reality distortion feel similar to what Steve Jobs had when he used to, you know, if you read the Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs autobiography by Walter Isaacson, you'll hear about him mentioning the. Steve Jobs reacted to the social field where he set, you know, um, 
unrealistic um, deadline goals for production of or feature updates or you know design changes right and the whole idea behind it was to push his team until to the point that they didn't know they could get pushed to right so you're essentially saying you know it's like personal trainers and you're doing 10 push-ups they always make you do five more right and lie so that you can at the end of it you uh, develop um the resilience needed right to withstand not just your prerequisite set numbers or reps of exercises but also any other thing that gets chucked at you so maybe it's a long term it's a quite a clever idea but short term i think it's a bit dumb opens them up to like stupid um lawsuits and all that sort of stuff but you know this is dana man he doesn't give an absolute he doesn't give a flying toss about anything so might work out for them in the long run but let's see um and I think the card is confirmed as well, isn't it? I'm pretty sure the card itself is confirmed. Let's see if I can find it here. I think they might have it on their site actually. Listed the entire thing. So yeah, that's that's the entire lineup of the card for QC two four nine next week. You got Tony Ferguson, Justin Gagey for the interim belt. So if if Tony wins, you'll be two time interim champion, which is quite funny. But if Tony loses against Justin Gagey, which is entirely possible too, he then loses the chance to fight Khabib. So, you know, fight fans don't win because you don't get to see the fight then again for another two years or something. Jessica Andrade versus Rose Namajunas, which would be an absolute hellraiser. Vincent Luque versus Nico Price, that would be a banger too. Loads of bangers, actually. Stephen, uh, Jeremy Stevens, sorry, versus um, Calvin Qatar. Nangana versus um, Rosenstruck. <sighs> definitely get, definitely make sure you're awake for that one because that's not going to go on for five or three rounds. No way. Uriah Hall versus Renato Souza, Greg Hardy versus um, Jorgen de Castro, Alexander Hernandez versus Omar Morales, Marlon Vera versus Ray Borg, another good one. So loads of really good fights. So let's see what happens. Of course, you know, I'm against it. I don't think it's an actual good idea, but as most fight fans are out there, you know, it's not, we don't run the company, but we're definitely going to watch the fight. So let's see how that runs true.